Hi, this is Dan, and this is a solutions video for statistics, uh, fall 2013, chapters 1 through 3 exam. Uh, there's 61 points on this test. I had one extra credit point, and I think I curved it one point. Uh, I think the high score was a 60 out of 61. So uh, the first one, first page almost everybody got right. Uh, obviously, observational study. We don't want to hurt people with toxins and um, explain. Obviously, you don't hurt them or rights of human subjects. Two, almost everybody got right as well. Uh, it's not representative because it's a voluntary response bias. How would you fix it? Make it random. And uh, it would be unimodal. There's definitely one mound here, and it's definitely skewed right. I think I only, if you had one or either of those, I gave you credit. And then I made this one extra credit one point. Which one do you think is higher, mean or median? If it's skewed right, that will disproportionately pull it to the right. So that means uh, the mean will be pulled, but the median will not really move. And we say the mean is what we call it's resistant to outliers. So, And then on number three here, a uh, little tricky here. If you add two data points higher than every other one, so let's say it's one, two, three, four, and I add the numbers five and six to it, okay? That's going to raise the mean. It's going to raise the median. It's going to raise the standard deviation and the range is going to be bigger and the interquartile range well it'll move all of those so that's why it's all of them and I made worth three points uh, four was a little tricky the wording on this is not great a lot of people did get it um, if 807 people took a medication suffered side effects the next year 391 391 suffered we don't know how many people actually took the medicine in either year so um, we really don't know uh, because we need to know the total number that took it and compare those percentages or ratios. And five, uh, the sample is the 50,000 students, the population is all college students, and is it representative as yes because it was random and everybody had the same chance of being selected. Number six, uh, to fix it, there's no true zero here. See how it starts at 60, so it could be misleading. These The difference between these bar graphs would be lessened if, it would, if there was a true zero, and that's how you would fix it. On seven, make a histogram remember there needs to be no gaps here and uh, something you know where the incomes on the x-axis labeled frequencies on the y-axis uh, and then it says describe the shape of the distribution I would call it unimodal there's definitely just one major mound here um, I, I think I would almost accept it's pretty uniform under six hundred dollars I don't nobody did that but um, I would accept some people say, oh, it might be a little skewed left. Okay, I accept that. It's not too bad. It's it's kind of a weird distribution, but um, yeah, there's definitely one mound here. And is it rare for someone to make over $600? That'd be yes. It's less than 5% of them do. Number eight, uh, this one's pretty straightforward. 16 pieces of data. So the median is 48. Uh, quartiles are at 37 and 63 and a half. Remember, it's halfway between here and halfway between here. So the interquartile range is 26 and a half. The difference between the highest and lowest is 51. The average is 50.8. To calculate the upper fence, it's quartile 3 plus 1.5 interquartile ranges, which gives us 103.25. If you made a mistake over here, I, in, but you did this calculation correctly, I didn't count that wrong. So you may want to check your paper to make sure you got that, uh, even if you didn't get it counted wrong, to make sure you have the correct numbers here. And lower fence is quartile 1 minus that same number, which is a negative. There are no outliers here. The lowest is set 29, the highest is 80. And here's the box and whisker plot. Make sure you have a scale here to compare against. And that's about it. That's worth 12 points. Number nine is uh, just draw the normal distribution, put 120 in the middle. What's the probability that somebody has a blood pressure under 100? So we found the Z score, 100 minus 120 over 12, We've got negative 0.167. Looked that up in the Z table and there's 0 0.0475 and that's pretty much it and then on um, the second part it's above 150 so again calculate your z-score you get a positive 2.5 if you looked it up in your z-table it's point like 0.9938 it's really high um, so how much is above that almost none one minus that that's how you find the area to the right you subtract the percentage of the p-value from the table from one and it's 0 0.0062 and then it says what's between here so you take what's below 150 minus below what's 100 so that'd be 0 0.9938 minus 0 0.0475 and there so it's about 94.63 percent of the data is between 
150 and 100. And then on 10, uh, just calculate the z-score of that day. So there's what they sold, there's the average divided by the standard deviation 2.16. Uh, draw a picture, find the z-score. On this one, you have to also find the z-score, which is 1.56. If you look that up in your z-table, that'll give you 0 0.9406. And we want the area to the right, so we subtract it from 1. So about almost 6% are uh, of the sales. Um, Oh, and then would be above 22,500. And it says, was Tuesday an unusual day? And that's the one from up here. So it was 23,000. That's over two standard deviations. We say, yeah, that's way less than 5%. That was an unusually good day. And 11, uh, we just want to calculate what is the temperature of somebody in the bottom 10%. So I give you negative 2.4 is the Z score, or no, just. Uh, what, what's the temperature of somebody that uh, can be described with negative 2.4? So it's negative 2.4 standard deviations below the mean. So there's our Z. We don't know the score. We do know the mean is 98.2. We know the standard deviation. So if we solve this for X, multiply both sides by 0.62, and then subtract uh, or add 98.2, we get 96 points. So right here would be 96.71 would represent somebody that's down there, uh, 2.4 standard deviations below. All right, so, um, if we, so if we multiply both sides by 0.62, we get this negative uh, 1.49, so x equals, so whatever, they, whatever their temperature is, minus 98.2 equals this negative 1.49, add 98.2 to both sides, there it is, 96.71 would be, um, that's that one. And then it says, what's the temperature of the top 10%. So if you look in your Z table and you look for the top 10%, it's a Z score of 1.28. I accepted, I think, all the way up to 1.3 and down to 1.26. But uh, 1.28 is probably about as close as you're going to get to the top, uh, the Z score for the top 10%. Yeah, let's keep going here. Number 12, uh, another Z table. You draw your picture, the average is 60.3. Uh, essentially, what's the z-score for somebody that's 6.7? And you calculate their two standard deviations, and we'll say, yes, that's unusual. Um, that's less than a 5% chance of, um, of them being uh, that tall. So that is an unusual height. And then 13, calculate the standard deviation. Um, there's our formula. So we find the average for this set of data is 7. So we see how far each data point is from 7. So 1 minus 7 is 6, and then we square it, which is how we get this 36. 3 minus 7 is 4, squared is 16. Do that for all the data points. Find the difference and square it, and add them all up. We get 130 divided by n minus 1. 6 pieces of data minus 1 is 5. Take the square root of that. So the standard deviation is 5.1. So that's it, and I hope that video helps you prepare for the exam or for the final.